Welcome to Maths for All. I'm Ashley Flynn. This is Higher Level. Today we're doing number patterns, geometric sums. For example, 1 plus 3 plus 9 plus 27 plus is um, a geometric series. The individual terms are separated by an operator, in this case a plus sign. And so this is a sum of many terms. So the question asks, what is S6, the sum of the first six terms of the series? So above we have four terms written. If we examine them, we can see that the common ratio going from term to term is 3. So each time you multiply the previous term by 3. So first we need to find out the fifth and sixth terms so we can answer the question. So T5 be 27 times 3 which is 81 and t6 is 81 times 3 which is 243 so to add the first six terms will give us s6 so adding them all up there we see we get a total of 355 this is known as s6 however this could be a problem if you we were asked to calculate something like s100 It'd be very tedious and very time consuming Luckily, we have a formula. We will derive this formula a little later. It's one of your formal proofs for the leaving cert at higher level. And this is our formula. Um, Sn is equal to a times 1 minus r to the power of n, all divided by 1 minus r. Okay, and this is in your formula books on the sequences and series pages. Now, we use the version above typically when our value of r, the common ratio, is less than 1. That means for series where the values are getting smaller as you go on. Okay, it is possible to use a slightly different version of it when your r is greater than 1, when the numbers are getting much larger. Okay, it can be useful to multiply the numerator and the denominator by minus 1. Okay, so you're not changing it essentially, it's mathematically the same. And what it appears as if the 1 and the ors have switched positions. Okay, and all this does is it avoids generating negative values for you when you're calculating. Okay, so you use whichever version is suitable um, so as to avoid negative values. Okay, here's a question. In a geometric series, T3 is 32 and T6 is 4, find A and R and hence find S8, the sum of the first eight terms. So we have a job to do first to find A and R. The information we're given concerns term 3 and term 6, so we're dealing with terms. So we'll use our TN formula, again from the formula books. And we substitute for what we do know. So T3 is equal to A to the power of R, or R to the power of 3 minus 1 gives 2. So the power is 1 less than the term. So AR squared equals 32. And for T6, we get AR to the power of 5 equals 4. So here we've got two equations. We have two unknowns, A and R. So we're going to use a form of simultaneous equations. So what I'm going to do for both of these is to rearrange and manipulate the formulae to give a equals. So a equals 32 divided by r squared from the first one and a equals 4 divided by r to the power of 5 from the second one. So what we can do now is we can put two of the same things equal to each other. So equate is the instruction. Equate the two expressions for a. Okay, so 32 over r squared is equal to 4 over r to the power of 5. And now we're going to solve for r. So continuing from the previous page, this is what we had. We are going to multiply both sides by r to the power of 5 so that we have r's on the left. Divide both sides by 32 so that we have numbers on the right. Okay, um, dividing numbers that have the same base and different powers, we subtract the powers, we get r to the power of 3. Simplifying the fraction on the right, 4 is common to top and bottom, we get 1 over 8. And I note that 8 is a cubed number, 
Okay, we can rewrite that as 1 over 2 to the power of 3. Remember, 1 to any power is still 1. Um, and by comparison, I can say that r is equal to 1 over 2, or a half. Now, now that we know the value of r, we can return and find the value of a. So I'm using my t3. It's a by r to the power of 2 equals 32. Okay, substituting in for what I now know is r, that's 1 over 2, and it has to be squared, 1 over 2 squared. Okay, leaves me with a over 4 equals 32, multiplying both sides by 4, I get a equals 128. So now I've found a and r, I must now find sa, the sum of the first eight terms. So my formula for the sum of a geometric series is here from the formula book. Substituting in for a and for r, this time we've a half to the power of 8. Okay, um, all right, uh, 2 to the power of 8 is 256, so you have 1 minus 1 over 256. Okay, which is 255 over 256. And uh, you can work out the top line and dividing by a half. Has the same effect as multiplying by 2. So we get 127.5 multiplied by 2. So the sum of the first eight terms is 255. Okay, another question. Find the number of terms n in the following series. So it gives us the start of the series and it gives us the last term. And hence find the sum of the series. Okay, so our first job is to find out which position in the series is 32 so which term is it okay and um, let's write down what we do know we know that a is 1024 okay uh, to find r we take uh, at any term and divide it by the previous term and that will give you r equals 1 over 2 or a half okay so you can see that each time the numbers are being halved okay now you could answer this by by continuing the series probably be the easiest in this case but we'll go through the process okay so i know that my term is 32 but which term is it so we're going to use the general form of the term for geometric series tn that we have here in red okay we're going to put the general form equals to 32 and we're going to substitute for what we do know, that's A and R. So that's what we get. Okay, and then we're going to solve for N. So dividing both sides by 1024, that's what we get. The next stage, I've simplified the fraction on the right. I get 1 over 32. I'm going to apply that power to the half. Remember, 1 to any power is just 1. So I get 1 over 2 to the power of N minus 1. And on the right, I've converted 32 into a power of 2. Okay, so you learn to recognize these numbers. And it is 2 to the power of 5. Now, by comparison, I can say, because everything else is the same, I can say that n minus 1 must be equal to 5. And solve for n, add 1 to both sides, I get n equals 6. So 32 is the sixth term in the series. Like I said, you probably get there quicker by just continuing the pattern. Now, we were asked to find the sum of the series. So what are we after? There's our sum formula. We're after S6. Okay, so there's S6. And we substitute in for our A and for our R. And the power we're using is 6. Okay, so for 2 to the power of 6, we get the number 64. Okay, underneath 1 minus a half is just half. Okay, 1 take 1 over 64 is 63 over 64. Work out the top line. Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2. So that's what I get. I got 1008 for the top line multiplied by 2, and I get 2016. Okay, now this next part is the derivation of Sn. So how do we get that formula for Sn? And this is one of the formal proofs you may be asked at higher level, okay, to show. So you need to learn this and be able to reproduce it in the exam. Okay, so the hardest part in these ones is to remember 
how to begin and then hopefully the rest will follow. So how to begin. So to derive means to obtain from the source. We will start from the beginning and obtain S, your SN formula. And we're going to begin by considering the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series which has first term a and common ratio r. So basically this is what it's adding. Okay, The first term is always a, second term is a by r, the third one is multiplied by an extra r each time. And then towards the end the last term will be a r n to the minus 1, so that will be the nth term. The previous one to that has one less r, so we have n minus 2. Okay, so this is the first line of your proof to write that out. Now, we'll continue on the next slide. The next stage is to multiply the left and the right by minus r. This will be shown in blue. Okay, so you have to recall what is the process, what you do next. All right, so this is what we had on the first slide. And now we're going to multiply by minus r. So this is the blue line, okay? So nobody's going to tell you to that. This is something you must memorize. Okay, so everything has changed to negative, And we have an extra factor of r on each one. Okay. Now combining these two equations, as you would with simultaneous, you will see that most of the terms combine to give zero. So you're allowed to do this mathematically. If left equals right in the red and left equals right in the blue equation, then when you combine them, the two lefts should be equal to the two rights. So this is what we're doing. So combining, you'll see some similar terms. So there you have an AR minus an AR that becomes zero. Same with the AR squares. A r cubes and the whole way up, a r n minus 1 and n minus 2. And so there's just two terms that do not cancel or do not make 0. Okay, so let's combine and see what remains after that process. What remains is on the left you have s n minus r s n equals on the right we have an a minus an a r to the power of n. Okay, so it's starting to look somewhat familiar. Now, if we factorize on both sides, so look for a common factor. On the left, the common factor is Sn, and on the right, the common factor is A. So take those outside the bracket. You have Sn by 1 minus R equals A by 1 minus R to the power of N. So we're almost there. If we divide left and right by 1 minus R, we arrived at our SN formula. Okay, so um, you may have to rewind that many times and go back and get a blank piece of paper and see how far you get each time. Okay.